In uh, 2007, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC, came up with a uh, very comprehensive report um, on the uh, science of uh, climate change. Um, the information in this report um, is derived from about mid-2006, that's when the uh, publication deadline was. So the, the, the data is current as of that date. Now it's interesting because when the report actually was published in 2007, um, things were already out of date. For example, on um, ice melt, um, it was uh, the, the, one of the mechanisms that they've determined since the report was published on ice melt is that you get surface melting on a glacier. So you get the uh, fresh water, which then kind of tunnels its way down through the uh, ice to the to the interface between the ice at the bottom and the bedrock that it's sitting on, and the water will lubricate that area, allowing the glaciers to, uh, to slide um, much more quickly. Um, thus, as the glaciers are moving faster at the end point, you get more and more uh, ice uh, calving off the glaciers, creating icebergs, which then melt fairly quickly. So uh, the whole mechanism of, of ice melt in, in like Greenland and Antarctic, for example, um, has our knowledge has, has increased uh, and the rates are you know are, are thus uh, are, are have increased uh, since the report so in terms of um, satellites are measuring um, mass loss in Iceland or, or in Greenland and Antarctica and showing that both continents are signi are significantly having significantly higher melt rates um, Greenland's basically melting from above and Antarctica Antarctica is melting from, from below. Um, as a result, uh, when you have ice melt on, on a, from a glacier that's uh, land-based, uh, that does contribute to sea level rise. Um, sea level rise, uh, the, had, the IPCC had projections on sea level rise that have already been exceeded. The latest numbers uh, are showing that the seas are rising at higher than three millimeters per year. As it, the averages over the last several decades are more like two millimeters per year. Um, other ice melt is occurring in the Arctic. Um, in 2007, uh, there was more ice melt of the, of the sea ice in the Arctic than, than, than uh, scientists would have imagined a few years ago. Um, the area of ice left at the end of the melt season was about four, was just over four million square kilometers, whereas um, previously it was more like seven or eight million square kilometers. And uh, there was a bit more, a bit less ice melt in 2008 and 2009, but you know, it's, you, it, by no means can it be called a recovery. I mean, the ice is still extremely thin. Most of it is first year ice, which is very soft and mushy and it can melt much more quickly than ice that has been around for several years. Um, the, uh, and, uh, our, hum our emissions are still increasing rapidly um, and that CO2 is ending up in the atmosphere but also in the, the oceans absorb uh, more than 50% of the, of the CO2, our two CO2 emissions and as a result the oceans are turning more acidic. In fact the acidity of the oceans has increased about 40% in the last uh, three decades. In fact, uh, the oceans are more acidic now than they have been in about the last 23 million years. So we're, 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 we're playing around with things on our planet which, um, are, are, uh, which, which are completely unknown. Some of the effects of this, you know, they're not, they're, they're not in human experience to, to have oceans this acidic, for example. You know, um, more acidic oceans means that any creature is forming a shell shellfish, crustaceans, um, there's, there, there's less calcium available in the more acidic ocean uh, for shell formation, so they'll be thinner. And there's certain types of uh, phytoplankton which also form shells, so phytoplankton are at the base of the food chain. So we're, 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 doing, we're, we're, we're affecting things um, at a very fundamental level of the food chain. Um, there's, there's more and more dead zones in the ocean, dead zones being uh, not enough dissolved oxygen to support fish or shellfish. Uh, very few creatures can uh, live in these zones. Uh, jellyfish is one example um, because they need less oxygen. Typically these, edge the, these dead zones have been caused by fertilizer runoff, but 
uh, with warmer oceans and more leading to more stratification, I less mixing of the ocean water. Some of these some of these dead zones are being created and are attributed to climate change. So this this report, uh, climate. There's no question climate change is complex. There's a lot of different science involved. It's a very multidisciplinary area involving biologists, physicists, chemists. You know the whole spectrum of science. Uh, so it's important for, for uh, some of this science to be broken down and simplified so that uh, people can understand it and understand uh, what, what, what's going on. So this report is, is an attempt to sort of summarize some of the key points of the science um, since the landmark report and uh, basically it shows that climate change is, is still rapidly accelerating and uh, it's time for us to uh, take it a lot more seriously and, and really do something to reduce emissions.